Um, Oh, yeah. wow, that's a new one. Sorry, um, yeah. That's right. Hi, everyone. I'm I'm Joe Ryle. I'm the campaign officer for the Four Day Week campaign. Um, I'm going to speak for about sort of 10 to 15 minutes about Four Day Working Week um, and then give people some time for questions. At some point, that someone may arrive at the building I'm working in, so I may have to just like dash down the stairs and let them in. Um, but that won't take longer than 10 seconds. Um, so just to start, I often, often start these talks by just saying, what is the Four Day Week? because um, sometimes it is it, it does get confused in terms of people have different interpretations of the four day week. What we mean by the four day week is a four day, 32 hour working week with no reduction in pay for workers. Uh, and the crucial part of that is reducing working hours. So sometimes the four day week gets confused as just working a normal amount of hours over five days into four, a sort of compressed hours version of the four day week. And now that is, that is not what we're calling for. Um, you know, fundamentally, we think that we need to be working less for all sorts of reasons, which I'll come on to. Um, but I think it's important to understand that. Um, in terms of the historical context, um, in terms of why are we arguing for a four day working week in, in 2021, it's important to look back at history first to see that um, in the early, or well, to know that in the early 1930s, 1940s, everyone used to actually work a six day week. Um, and it was a campaign that existed then, uh, led by many of the trade unions uh, across the world, not just here in the UK, that led to us adopting a nine to five, five day working week, week model and essentially winning the weekend for everyone. Um, and that, yeah, that was a historic campaign. Um, and, you know, since then, I mean, it, it's quite ridiculous, really, that since then, uh, we've had this nine to five, five day working working model as the, as the norm, which is, you know, it, it is based on an agricultural industrial economy. Um, and that hasn't really changed, um, even though that was such a long time ago. Um, there was a gradual reduction of working hours until about the 1980s. Um, but since the 1980s, working hours have barely reduced at all. So we believe that we're long overdue a reduction in working hours. Um, and there's a particular problem in the UK where we work some of the longest full-time hours in the world, one of the longest in, in, in Europe compared to, except for Greece and Austria, um, while having the, the lowest levels of productivity and the fewest number of bank holidays. So working all this time is not resulting in good practice. Um, and I guess, so, so, so to move it on a bit, um, why is the four day working week gained prominence and momentum since the COVID pandemic, uh, which is what we found, you know, it, it seems to have taken on a new, leaps and bounds um there's many reasons for that one of them is obvious is that you know what seemed impossible prior to the pandemic for example moving the majority of work overnight to being remote and from home um has opened people's eyes i think to the to the fact that when we when we do want the world of work to change it can happen very quickly and um, the furlough scheme that the government in introduced again was something that no one would have foreseen you know half of the population being paid by the government uh, not to work and you know for many people we have had more time on our hands to reimagine a better future and you know overwhelmingly better work-life balance is something that everyone everyone wants and is that you know is something that everyone should strive for uh, and, and and the four-day week does poll very popularly across the board across not just Labour and and, and, and more left-leaning voters but also with Conservative voters too um, there's also another strong, strong historical argument for, for a four day week, which is that in times of economic recession and crisis, uh, when, you know, when jobs are, are limited and, and you know, with increasing automation and new technology, there, there is an argument that we're going to need to share the existing work more equally across the economy. And, and, and the four day week is one solution to that because you're reducing unemployment in, in, in the same process if it's implemented across the board. Um, in terms of the benefits of a four day week, we, we say that a four day week is good for the economy good for workers and good for the environment. Um, it's good for the economy because wherever it seems to be trialed or implemented, productivity always goes up or at least remains the same. Um, as I said, it would, it would reduce unemployment if implemented across the economy. And it would also actually boost local economies. As, as we saw in the COVID pandemic, when people were spending, had more time to spend locally, you know, uh, sales went up in local shops um, and, and the, all the evidence looks like if, if people had a bit more free time on their hands, one extra day off, a lot of that would be spent in the local economy, in local shops, local cinemas, etc. Um, 
why is it good for workers? And this is the most important one. Um, you know, before the pan, prior to the pandemic, we already knew that more than two thirds of workers were overworked, burnt out in their jobs and wanted to work less. Um, and so the, the most obvious benefit to a four day reduced working week is the boost it would give to mental health. Um, and, and, you know, that is the, probably the strongest argument for it, to be, to be quite frank. Um, you know, and, and again, as part of the historic demand for more leisure time, this, is, this would enable us to have more free time to, to spend doing whatever we wanted. It seems to be that most people, when we poll this, just want to simply spend more time with their family and friends because under the existing nine to five, five day working week model, it only, that only leaves two days for, for socialising, you know, and, and, and with, there's a whole host of other benefits that it could provide in terms of preventing family breakdown uh, if people have, that, have more free time. Um, and increasingly now, there's stronger evidence suggesting that it would be a very good move for the environment and, and would help towards uh, tackling climate change. You, you, some of you may have seen a report we had out less than two weeks ago in The Guardian and, and, and elsewhere, um, which looked at the gains that could be made in terms of reducing the UK's carbon footprint through moving to a four day week. Because if people are working less, then they're commuting less and you know, helps with energy consumption as well. Uh, and, and, and would give people more time to engage in more sustain, you know, environmentally sustainable behaviours. Uh, there's, you know, there's another argument related to that in terms of it being good for democracy as well, because if we had more free time and there's more time to take part in local democracy, engage with your local councillors, local MPs, and to take part in local politics. Um, in terms of some of the examples that uh, are coming out, there's some, some much more stronger and prominent organizations now looking at at least trialing the four-day working week so microsoft in japan trialed a four-day week uh, under the model we call for no reduction in pay 32 hours in 2019 and they found that productivity went up by 40 percent which is basically explained by the simple notion that you know if you're better rested uh, then you're going to be more motivated to perform better at work you're going to come back in on a monday morning it tends to be the case that people want fridays off you're going to come back more refreshed on a Monday morning and you're going to do a better job. Um, we've seen at least 20 small businesses in the UK adopt four day week and, and, and sign up to our accreditation scheme for employers since the pandemic. Uh, so it's an increasing amount of smaller, smaller businesses trialing it. Uh, and Unilever in, um, in their New Zealand office are doing a year long trial, uh, which is one of the biggest ever trials and, and have said that they will look to roll that out globally if it's a success. Um, in terms of national level kind of move towards a four day week, we now have the Spanish and the Scottish governments uh, committed to a national level pilot scheme, uh, which they're putting money towards to trial it amongst sort of 200 to 300 companies. Uh, it's unclear at the moment where that funding will go because, you know, all the evidence suggests that most companies could just simply move to a four day week, same pay and would still remain profitable. Um, but it may be that some of that funding is going to go to some of the sectors where it's slightly more difficult to implement. Um, but we're starting to feel fairly confident there's a, there's a sort of growing inevitability now about the need to be working less, particularly, you know, around, you know, if we're going to see increasing automation, new technology, which is reducing the number of jobs, then we're going to need to share the workload more equally across the economy. Um, and the, the accreditation scheme that we launch is, is modelled on the Living Wage Foundation model, which, you know, which they launched 10 years ago, the Living Wage Foundation, with about 20 companies, similar number to, to what we've got today. And they now have 7,000 companies across the economy signed up to living their, you know, their living wage rate, which, which does show, you know, th things can change it and it does take time. Um, but that's the situation where we find, find ourselves in. Uh, I guess just to conclude in terms of how to... It, how to achieve a four day working week across the board. Now, of course, we would love to see the UK government implement, you know, a trend. This is not something you could implement overnight across the entire economy. You'd have to have a transition to get there. But our kind of main goal is for the government to um, implement it, you know, within a parliament. We think it could take about four to five years to, to, to get the entire economy there. Um, but, you know, we, we recognise that while the, the Conservative government does seem to have soft, softened their position slightly in terms of their opposition to a four day week, we, we don't think they're gonna do that anytime soon. So that kind of top down approach, you know, we have been campaigning quite successfully in Scotland to get the government to, to back a pilot scheme there. But alongside that top, the kind of top down approach, we also want, the exciting thing about working on the campaign is that there's also a bottom up approach to getting there. And part of that is, is the number of companies just getting on with it and doing it themselves. You know, bosses saying, Bosses sort of 
seeing that wherever this is trialed, productivity seems to go up, the profits seem to stay the same. You know, in, in lots of instances, the, the company's performing better. And so there's a clear business case there to just get on and do it. And we're increasingly seeing companies doing that. Um, but of course not, you know, we can't just expect all bosses to hand down the four day working week to their employees. And that's where, you know, real trade union organizing needs to come in. And, and we've always said that, you know, the trade union should be at the forefront of any transition to a four day week. So increasingly now we're seeing workers contacting us and we want to encourage as much as possible um and you know the solution to workers demanding a four-day week within their workplace is join a trade union uh you know use the collective bargaining process that you have once a year to demand a four-day week from their employers and that will be another way that we do get there um we are working with a number of local councils at the moment as well around a kind of feasibility study into running pilots at a local council level which is quite exciting uh it's one of the big things we've got on at the moment um but yeah it does feel like we're it, it feels like we're winning the argument on a four day week at the moment. And it, it, the, the press coverage has been immense over the last year or so uh, in terms of like the, you know, we're nowhere near the majority of, of, of companies and businesses moving to a four day week. But there was a survey out recently that showed that um, I think it was 18% of UK companies are considering moving to a four day week and that 5% of small and medium sized businesses already have a four day week, which does mean that 3 million employees could move to a four-day week really soon uh and nearly 840,000 employees are already working a four-day week so this is you know this this kind of this 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 trend is already happening in some respects um so that's where yeah I, I think i'll leave it there and then um if you've got any questions and, and any specific questions about your organization how it might work there then please do please do shout them out um yeah i think we've got about 15 minutes left for questions great thanks joe um, you can also pop the questions in the chat or just ask them straight. I think, Tom, did you, you said you had a question. I did have a question, but I think it was very well answered, actually. Thank you. Was already also, if answered. anyone wants me to send any of the links to any of the stuff that I talked about in the chat, please just let me know. I'll try and dig them out quickly. Um, I've got a couple of questions, if that's all right, Jay. Yeah, go for it. Um, so uh, the first question was around do you find by offering a four day week, it increases the diversity of who would apply for jobs? So I'm thinking the two main groups might be around people with disabilities where, um, you know, uh, especially around mental health or those sorts of things, it becomes less of a drain for them to do it four days a week rather than that, uh, rather than five days a week, or like parents or those sorts of things, or people with other commitments. Do you see an increase with those, those sorts of people being employed? I think with the scale of uh, trials and implementation so far, it's hard to tell with uh, disabled people whether there's any, uh, has been any clear link yet. Uh, mm -hmm. Yet, I, I suspect there would be, but we do know from uh, some of the companies that have done it, that in terms of gender balance um, and, and, you know, giving, you know, traditionally, a lot of care responsibilities are often taken up by women and actually the four day week uh, allows those to be shared more equally between men and women and and that's increasingly being found in the in the research that's done where companies want to try on autonomy the think tank that i do some work with they um do monitor all of that and that's increasingly coming up by employees and, and, and the same for, for for people with child care responsibilities is that those have tended to uh be more apportioned towards women and that that seems to balance it out a lot more so that is that is a very strong argument as well for the four-day week great and where you're seeing it trialed is it more the companies open for those four days or do they still do a traditional monday to friday and then the workers will pick which day that they don't work uh, or is it a combination of what works for the company i guess yeah, it's a combination. It's always flexible. The most possible way of doing it is to just shut the office on a Friday, uh, mm -hmm. but not every you know type of employment would allow for that. So the, you may have, for example, uh, Buffer, who are the um, you may have heard of a social media organisation. They, they allow the sort of uh, coordination of, of posting on social media across different platforms at the same time. They uh, have the customer service team, and so actually. Of their 90 employees, I think 85 of them take Friday off. But for the five that have to be customer front facing, 
they are on a rotation pattern where each of them takes a different day off um to allow there always always to be someone in that customer facing team so the, there's different ways of doing it and, and you know we've always said that where flexibility where there's a, as much flexibility as possible built into any uh trial that, or implementation that's that's the best approach okay that sounds great and sorry final question um do you find so i know other companies have done what they call like a compressed fortnight um across it so bp being one of the big ones that it's known for do you find that's useful has like a stepping stone to a four day week or do you find that actually once they sort of make those sort of changes they're not interested and then we're taking it further I mean, you know, the, the world of work is changing and, and has been uprooted and is changing overnight. And, and as part of that experimentation, we wouldn't, you know, be against companies experimenting with that. And, you know, and if that's what works best for the most important thing is that uh, employees are consulted properly and, and agree on what on what on what they think is best. You know, if if all employees agree that compressing their hours into four days rather than five is, is better, then that's fine. But it's not. It's not ideal, you know, it's far from ideal to be working such long days on, let's say, mm. Monday to Thursday or Friday off, you know, that, that that's not correcting the problems that we have yeah. of, of overwork, burnout, stress, mental health, you know, related conditions through work. And, and I think that's really important to, to know. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. Right. Sorry, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, go for it. It seems to me like one of the kind of next big fights that, that employees are going to have in terms of um keeping employees is getting that kind of work-life balance that a lot of people have enjoyed during the pandemic so the portion of workers who wouldn't want to return to the office any more than a few days a week or a month or, or whatever because they've enjoyed the, the benefits of their flexibility but i guess what i what i'm trying to say is how do we make sure that this movement and any movements around improving the situation for workers doesn't just focus on people who work in offices and can have quite nice home working setups because a lot of people are, have benefited from working from home over a year now and had all this great free time and loss of commute and saved money and you know that, that opportunity to get away from your desk but a lot of people have been on the front lines and I guess I'm wondering how do we make it a movement that doesn't just focus on whether your office has a flexible Friday kind of thing yeah so that's, i mean that's 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 fundamental you know it's got to be for it to be implemented in an inclusive way you know that doesn't pit workers against each other it's got to be implemented across the economy and we've got to find the ways of doing that it you know i i won't deny that it is harder to implement in some sectors but for example all the manufacturing trade unions industries there's, there's big support for a four-day working week there um you know it's got to be white collar and blue collar workers it, it can't just be an office-based uh, transition um, because it's just you know that's just going to annoy too many people and it's just it's, it's unfair to do it in that way. Uh, but it, you know it, it will be it will be a challenge to, to get there. But it's interesting in, in something like the construction industry where um, people say it's harder to do. Actually, that's that's an industry where it does make a whole load of sense because workers um, in the construction industry they really really damage their bodies by the. The, the heart heavy lifting they're doing the heavy workload that happens over five days and there's a really strong case there to move to a four-day week just to actually keep their physical health in better shape which in the long run should also result in greater productivity um, so it, it does need to be implemented across the board the, the service sector is another one where it's difficult for example a restaurant or a cafe that has to be open let's say seven days a week to to remain profitable and so you can be quite strategic and clever with the shift and rotor patterns to make sure that no one worker is working more than four days but it does get more tricky and and, and that is kind of where we're saying that if there is going to be national level subsidy put in to enable the transition then that's where that money should be going it should be to to pay the fifth day or, or, or fifth day salary of those workers to to enable that cafe or restaurant to be able to pay to hire slightly you know maybe one or two more additional staff um yeah I ask a, a follow-on question from that because that's yeah, of course. that's really interesting idea in the idea of could it, could the campaign I suppose um, focus on the public sector primarily because there's there's an easier route to um, influencing the public sector and how they do their practices as opposed to trying to capture the whole breadth of the private sector and 
and I guess look at the campaign through the eyes of trying to get the public sector to set an example and then after a transitional period put in place something that's a bit more solid like legislatively yeah. right I don't know if that's if I've possibly missed that in the talk but I just wanted no, to no 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 there, there was a report yeah. out there was a report out by autonomy the think tank on exactly that on the public sector being a pioneer for the four-day week and and we're actually looking into more detail at the moment into how you'd implement it, the best way of implementing it in the NHS and in schools. Because um, actually the NHS have got some of the most overworked, burnt out workforce in the entire country, particularly after the pandemic, uh, where a four day week would actually make a lot of sense in terms of retaining those jobs instead of all these people leaving the NHS. Um, move, it looks like moving to a four day week would actually retain a lot of the jobs that they're losing. There's huge vacancies in NHS at the moment. Um, but yeah, the public sector should and could be a pioneer for it. And um, I will, before the next question, I'll just dig out the report, which is worth reading through because it's in quite a lot of detail. So any more questions? Yeah, I was um, wondering if a four day work week would correspond with a four day school week as well. So I say that one more time and Laurie would, a, would a four would a four day work week correspond with a four day school week for students? That's a good that's a good question which we're looking at exactly at the moment um, to to try and work it out because we we realize that if the problem if not the problem with implementing it in, in some specific sectors and not across the whole economy is it can create other problems in other areas. So uh, we think that we should, the school week probably should go down to about four days. But as things stand at the moment, if parents aren't also on a four day week, then that's going to create a childcare problem. Um, but there are numerous examples across the world, particularly in America as well, where they are reducing the school week um, to four or four and a half days. And, and there's there's one uh, secondary school in London in Newham actually which has gone to, which went down to four and a half day a week about two years ago and has been really popular of everyone and really successful and um, but we are looking at that because because yeah if you know if, if teachers move down to four days a week um, and schools remain open for five then again there's going to be an additional cost there to the, to the taxpayer through public sector and having to hire more teachers to make up that time um, so it's a tricky one that we're looking at and, and what we might do is present this report coming out in a few months present a, a few different options but one of them definitely will be reducing the school week uh, yeah and then you know there's other arguments that you could bring in there in terms of extracurricular activities that kids could be doing in an extra day off you know it, it, maybe, maybe they shouldn't just be in the classrooms five days a week okay thank you uh just to follow on from that um do we would would you think that a four day work week should be just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and it would be very rigid, or would it be something correspond to effectively a shortening of hours, which would maybe, and therefore, do you think it would be more flexible for employers and employees, especially those who have to, for example, maintain infrastructure five days or even seven days a week? I mean, we it's 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 tricky. If if we were you know if I was able to just implement the four day week across the economy overnight you know then then we would probably do the way they did in the 30s and 40s where you just basically Saturday used to be a working day it no longer was a working day and so it kind of got scrapped and everyone went to down to five to be ideally you would do that and you know we are trying to normalize as much as possible the idea that Friday is a non-working day and Friday is is, is a day off uh, which is increasingly the day that people are taking off and apparently someone was saying to me last week that it's impossible now in the, in the civil service to get a meeting on a Friday because so many people have, um, have have they've done it with loss of pay but have just chosen for themselves they prefer to work four days rather than five and have, have taken the pay cut and have Fridays off. So it is kind of happening that way as well. Um, but you know we're not against even though we say no reduction in pay if, if 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 a worker can afford to reduce their pay to four days rather than five then we think they should do that because they're going to be much happier working four days. Um, but, but, but at the same time, you know, some of the best examples of, of companies moving to a four day week are where flexibility has been built in and, and actually they've been able to say, we need someone on every day. We do need someone on, on, a, on a Friday there speaking to customers or, or, some, or some companies do it completely differently and they will take Wednesday off, you know, so that it, the most important thing is that 
that a company can find the best way of implementing it. And so flexibility has to be built into it at the moment. I'm fine, thank you. Um, can I just ask you one question, Joe? So how do you, how do you find people go about the whole holiday thing then? Is that... In terms of annual leave entitlements? Yeah. Yeah, the phone's just ringing here, sorry. Oh. Um, so it tends to be that when companies trial it, and we always say, you know, if, if you're unsure about uh, implementing it, then why not just trial it for, for three to six months and give it a go, see what happens. It tends to be the case that during a trial period, companies keep annual leave entitlements as they are. But when the move is made permanent, it, the general expectation that is that annual leave would reduce by about uh, by, by 20%. Um, so if you, you probably get five days less, but you know that's made up for you're getting an extra day off every single week. So it's not like you're still getting more way more holiday overall. But the, the kind of yeah the expectation is that you would twenty percent of your annual leave entitlement you would lose, but overall you're getting much more. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, any other questions, anyone? I just have a <clears throat> just a quick comment, Joe. Thanks for the. Mm. Thanks for the, the, the presentation. Um, it's like for the, you know, the four day week is something I've been really interested in, especially in uh, over the last year or two, because um, I work at Space4, but I run a creative and digital media organization back in Zimbabwe. And we started doing a four and a half day week about two years ago after our um, uh, team members started requesting to have Friday afternoons off. And we kind of trialed doing Friday afternoons off. We would do it twice a month. And kind of saw that productivity didn't suffer at all and everyone just generally seemed happier and also realized that actually you know fuck all work was getting done really on a friday afternoon anyway oh. and switched off um so we yeah we transitioned to it to a, a four and a half day week um which which is going which is going really well um and i think you know that the the ideal is to go to a four day week i think for us because you know we uh, we're a kind of hybrid organization, so we generate our own revenue, but we also get some kind of donor or foundation funding for for some programs. And so I think for us, the key thing would be actually, of course, convincing donors to just allow us to work those those four days instead of the four and a half. Yeah, um, that's interesting. I mean, yeah, I would say definitely talk to Will Strong, who's in the office there, for you, because you know their autonomy run a consultancy service, so can advise on on that. But I think increasingly. It, I hope that you know the four-day working week will be seen as like in the same way as a living wage. It's like the best practice employment. So actually, it'll be something you'll be able to gloat about uh, to donors and funders to say that we 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 treat our employees the best possible way. They have a four-day week because um, that is starting to happen across the board. And interesting where where companies have moved to a four-day week. What they've all said, which is a, a benefit we hadn't even thought of, is that they're increasingly finding it easier to attract more talent to their organization when going through recruitment drives because it's much more desirable to work a four-day week. They're actually bringing in much better suited people to jobs, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Just another argument for it. Yeah. I'll definitely chat to Will. I think he just popped out to grab some yeah, yeah, yeah. lunch in the kitchen, but uh, <laughs> chat to him. Great. Um, anyone else? We've kind of, yeah, we're in a good time. I think we said about half an hour. So if you have any more questions, you can also pop them in the chat or get in touch, really. Yeah, I'll just put my email in the chat now. Here's anyone wants to email me any more questions. Yeah. Have a meeting this BM. Oh, Lion Manager. Okay. Uh, Fazana, do, do you want to, should we, maybe do you want to stay on the call? We could chat quickly. Is that, okay, yeah, great. Perfect. That's, oh, so I think if I just hang up, then the whole thing. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, okay, I'll, uh, what, what's your email, Fazana? I'll, I'll email you um, a, a Zoom link. We can just quickly chat if it's, if it's afternoon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. I'm going to hang up and um, keep in touch and, um, yeah, check out our website for more events and all that stuff. But I'm going to uh, right. end this call. <laughs> Thanks, Maddie. Right. Thanks, Thank you so Bye. much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.